Back in the early days of Autodesk Inventor, Autodesk would provide samplings of new technology advancements on a site called Autodesk Labs. By far, one of my personal favorite technology previews was the 2D to 3D tool for Inventor. This application allowed you to spatially develop a 3D model from two or three traditional 2D orthographic views. Sadly, this tool never gained enough traction to become an official Autodesk offering, and it eventually disappeared after 2016. The goal of this video is to promote a manual process I developed that provides the same functionality as the old 2D to 3D tool. So join me as we look back into the past to find a little 2D inspiration for a new 3D process. For those of you who never used the application, I want to quickly review what the original 2D to 3D tool actually did. You originally copied your orthographic views from AutoCAD and pasted them into an inventor sketch. You then activated the 2D to 3D tool. You were prompted to select your front, top, and side views. Then the tool would automatically arrange them in 3D space so you could begin the spatial development of the desired shape. A few weeks ago, I was preparing a webinar called Things You Didn't Know Inventor Could Do. I'll put a link in the description for that. I wanted to share that three-view spatial development workflow. But without the old 2D to 3D tool, I was faced with the task of manually placing the 2D views on multiple planes and getting them all to line up correctly. Now saying this was a pain would be a complete understatement. After finally setting up the views manually, I thought to myself, there must be a better way to do this. So I set out to find the most efficient process for manually placing and aligning multiple orthographic views in Inventor's 3D space. So I want to share with you the process I came up with, and hopefully you will learn a few things you didn't know Inventor could do along the way. The process starts in AutoCAD, where you will usually find the original orthographic views of the desired component. This is where our first critical step in the process is applied. You must make sure the front, top, and side views are orthographically aligned in the traditional manner. But you also have to make sure the top and side views are orthographically aligned to a 45 degree construction line. The top and side views must be aligned in this manner in order to line up correctly when placed in Inventor. Adding the 45 degree line and adjusting the views in AutoCAD is much easier than manually adjusting them in Inventor. Trust me on that. Our next step in the process is to remove or hide any unnecessary geometry. In this case, we don't need to see the dimension lines or the construction lines. We don't need to see the center lines or the hidden lines. These lines will make profile selection very difficult in the upcoming steps. So we can simply turn off those layers. The only lines we are interested in are the visible edges of the desired component. Now we want to simply copy the remaining geometry and paste it into Inventor. In Inventor, I will start a new part and create a sketch on the XY plane. It is important to note that we copied the original data from the AutoCAD XY plane and we are pasting this data to a new inventor sketch on the XY plane, which is noted by the view cube as the front plane. You want to note that I'm pasting very close to the zero, zero point. For time's sake, I'm going to move on, but it would be very easy to manually move all the views into precise alignment with the origin point. Let's finish the sketch and continue. Now in inventor, we reach another critical step in the process. We need to duplicate the sketch twice. Notice I'm not sharing the sketch. I'm duplicating it. To do this, you right click on sketch one in the browser and select copy from the right mouse button menu. Then you select the XY plane in the origin folder, right click and select paste. This creates a copy of the original sketch calling it sketch two. We will simply paste it again to create sketch three. The next critical step is to redefine sketches two and three. We will right click on sketch two and select redefine. Then select the XZ plane. This sketch will align with the top view according to the view cube. Then we will right click on sketch three and select redefine. We select the YZ plane this time, creating the sketch for the side view. 
Now I know this looks complicated and messy, but the views are in the correct orientation and alignment. You could actually start the 3D spatial development right now, but I want to clean up each view by removing the unnecessary geometry. This will give you a clearer picture of each view when we get to the 3D development part of our process. So I will activate the front view sketch, which is sketch one, and select the geometry that is not part of the front view and delete it. I'll finish that sketch and activate the top view, which is sketch two, removing any geometry that is not associated with the top view. Finally, I'll activate sketch three, the side view, and delete all geometry that's not part of that view. Now at this point, I want to call a quick timeout and note the three views are in place and aligned correctly. This is what the original 2D to 3D tool actually did. The 2D to 3D tool simply placed the views and sketches in their proper orientation and alignment. It did not actually develop the part model for you. That's our next step, and it's really where the fun begins. Now we want to begin our spatial development. To begin, I will extrude the front view symmetrically enough to reach the other views. Using the symmetrical option just eliminates the need to flip the extrude direction for each subsequent feature. Hitting apply will reduce the number of clicks as well. I will then extrude the top view, making sure to carefully select the profiles necessary for the final form. It is important to note that this extrusion will be set to intersect the first. Again, I want to hit apply. Now we will extrude the side view again, making sure to carefully select the necessary profiles and again intersecting the current shape. And there you have it. Here is our part spatially developed from the original orthographic AutoCAD views. This part happens to be a sheet metal part, so we could easily convert it to sheet metal set the sheet metal default with the desired thickness, and generate the flat pattern. It is amazing to think that this part was developed from 2D legacy AutoCAD views, and this new model can provide additional manufacturing information like this new flat pattern. I want to work through the process once again to give you a chance to see the 2D to 3D spatial development workflow one more time. The next example is a file I developed a very long time ago when I was learning 3D modeling in old AutoCAD. The team I was working with had developed a simple model of an aircraft carrier, and we wanted to create a rendering of the project. Our problem was we needed jets to place on the flight deck for the final image. So how did we create a passable 3D jet model using the 1990s old AutoCAD primitive 3D interface? Simple. We downloaded orthographic views of the jets and used the 2D to 3D process you just witnessed. Here is the initial AutoCAD drawing containing the profiles we developed from the downloaded image of the jet. Please notice the views are orthographically aligned and the top and side views align along the 45 degree construction line. I'm going to turn off the construction line layer and copy the geometry. In Inventor, I will create a new part, then create a new sketch on the XY plane. I will then paste the geometry into the sketch. I placed this circle at the origin in AutoCAD so I could use it to easily move the geometry back to its original position. This step is not necessary, but I wanted to include it to show you how easy it is to move the geometry. I'll finish the sketch and move on. Our next steps are to duplicate and redefine the sketches. First, I select Sketch 1 in the browser, right-click and select Copy. Then I select the XY plane from the Origin folder, right-click and select Paste. I paste twice to create the three sketches I need. Now I select Sketch 2, right-click and select Redefine. Then select the XZ plane, creating the sketch for the top view. I repeat the redefine process on sketch 3, this time selecting the YZ plane for the side view. Now I will activate each sketch and remove the unnecessary geometry from each view. Again, this is an optional step. You can skip it if you'd like. I do it to make the 3D development a little easier to understand. Again, I want to pause and note 
that this is what the original 2D to 3D tool actually accomplished. Duplicating and redefining the sketches and cleaning up the unnecessary geometry is the new 2D to 3D manual process. Now it's time for the 3D development, or the fun part. In this case, we'll focus on the fuselage first. We will extrude the front profile symmetrically. Remember we do this to avoid determining the direction of the subsequent extrusions. We also want to remember to click the Apply button. Then we will extrude the top profile and choose to intersect the existing shape. We will repeat this for the side profile, again choosing the Intersect option. The resulting shape is a rough approximation of the jet fuselage. To model the wings and the horizontal and vertical stabilizers, we need to utilize Inventor's multi-body workflow. Let's start with the wings. We need to turn on the visibility of our three sketches. Then we extrude the top view of the wings, this time using the new solid option. Then we extrude the side profile of the wings, choosing to intersect with the previously created wing solid. For the stabilizers, we simply repeat the multi-body process. I will extrude the top horizontal stabilizer profile as a new solid, then extrude the corresponding side profile, choosing to intersect with the appropriate solid body. The vertical stabilizers are the result of the front profile extruded as a new solid and the two intersecting side profiles. And here you have the rough approximation of the jet. It certainly isn't perfect, but this could just be the first step in creating a more accurate design. But we know the spatial analysis of the design is spot on. It lines up perfectly from the top, front, and side views. Well, this will conclude our review of the new manual 2D to 3D spatial development process. I wanted to take a moment to thank the team behind the original 2D to 3D tool. I also want to thank the Autodesk Inventor development team. The 2D to 3D tool never made it into the Inventor application, but it is amazing that Autodesk Inventor is versatile enough to easily duplicate the intent of that old 2D to 3D tool. I hope you all learned a couple of things as you reviewed this process with me. I know duplicating and redefining the sketches was the big discovery for me. And I hope you get a chance to try the 2D to 3D spatial development process outlined in the video. If you found this video informative, please consider liking and subscribing. If you use the workflow or come up with a potential improvement, please let me know in the comments section below. Thanks for watching.